Pretty good, thanks. How are you today? Yeah, really good. I uh, really enjoyed the movie. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. It makes yeah. me happy. I think it's, um, I'm not sure if it's because of lockdown, but I'm just so desperate to go to somewhere like Italy at the moment, just seeing it all on the bit, seeing it on the screen. I think, uh, I think yeah. lockdown has a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know, I was, I was saying earlier, um, the, you know, the, the, the hunger for this, the dystopian TV shows that, you know, have possessed us for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years now, uh, now that we are actually living in a dystopian reality, um, frightened to death uh, about how we're going to pay our telephone bill or our heating bill or wherever we're going to get back to work, back to any kind of sense of normalcy. Uh, like the 30s, when Hollywood were making all of these movies where with the happy endings, you know, uh, this is a movie that really embraces uh, a, a whimsical adventure in a beautiful um, background with with real earthy people, you know, uh, not like the Hollywood thing where a guy like me uh, being in a movie where where the wife would be in her thirties. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's real, and, and Wendy Curson. It is is one of the most beautiful actors ever to grace the screen and uh, and you know and, and it's it's just uh, extraordinary lovely um, uh, feel good movie yeah I think lovely is the word I just felt really warm watching it um, I was wondering you know because if if you can connect to the character and that kind of longing sometimes just to kind of get away from it all and or in some ways I mean the, the role of of an actor you get you're constantly exploring the world meeting new people do you think in some ways you get to fulfill some of the um, the things that your character's lacking just by proxy of, of your profession Abs yeah uh, sure Definitely, uh, it's like, a, and also expunging demons that live inside of me, uh, kind of sublimating unresolved, broken emotional history that I can um, put put into the character, into the movie. This character and I have a lot in common, uh, and also because of that, it was it was relatively easy also the idea of, of being in show business and what it's afforded me my family i don't think we've taken many vacations as a family because every time i got a job it was a vacation for the kids you know we wherever wherever the job took me uh us all over the world as a matter of fact um the, these were the the things, but we're there already. So uh, after the job or in between the job, we can go and explore. Um, that's that's an amazing opportunity. Um, uh, I don't have much of a bucket list because I've gotten to go all of these places. Yeah, because obviously you've got some Italian heritage yourself. That in the movie, the character's kind of reconnecting with his roots. Did you, through the prism of your character, have do that yourself in some ways? Yeah, my actually, my wife and I, where I, where we were in Acerenza, which is uh, in the region of, of uh, Basilicata, so it's it's in the south, at, between Bari and uh, uh, Salerno, uh, on the Atlantic, uh, where where my parents, my grandparents are from, is a is a, a little bit north of that by forty five minutes. Uh, a, 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 a village, a town actually called uh, Avellino. And Avellino um, is like the Trenton to New Jersey. It's where all the records are. And so we, we drove there and had lunch there one day on a day off, uh, literally you know, 40 miles from where my grandparents were born and, and left uh, their, their homeland for for the promise of a better life. And this is a story about a guy who, whose promise was fulfilled, whose parent, mother ta takes him to America for a better life. Um, and he gets, he gets the education. Uh, he falls in love uh, with a Canadian woman. He winds up, you know, planting stakes in, 
in, in, in Canada, in Toronto. Um, he gets everything that, 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 he, that he, wildest dreams and they have a family and they're, they're doing well, but he's lost, um, he's lost the love, uh, doesn't even know it. I, I, that was, I found interesting. Usually, you know, his wife tells him at the very beginning is, you know, we've grown distant and he's like, we, we have, um, um, and, and something's gnawing at him. He's not quite sure even, he knows, you know, in, in the betrayal, he betrays his mentor uh, and best friend who's, who's tasked him with fulfilling this dying man's vision of a company that he started. And then I stab him in the back for, you know, for the corporate party line. And in doing so, I basically, I rigid, rigid, just shut down and I quit my job and somehow wind up in my homeland that I haven't been to in 45 years. Don't even have the benefit of, of my first language. It's been so long. Because I so desperately trying to look like an American. I, I personally felt that as a kid growing up in New Jersey because we were just one generation off. So Italians were still on the, on the lower end of the food chain. We were WAPs and guineas. Um, uh, and, uh, and, you know, then, then Puerto Ricans started coming in. So we had somebody to hate, you know, transfer their hate. So the, the Puritans first hated the Irish who then hated the Italians and the Jews and then hated the Puerto Ricans and everybody hated the blacks. You know, it's like, we all come here. Black people were forced here in chains. They're here the longest, 400 years, built America. And then, and then all of these immigrants that came here all for a better life, you know? Um, this is a story, this guy has the life, the life of his dreams and then <laughs> leaves. He leaves Canada and, you know, and his wife and his daughter, you know, to try to find something that he doesn't even know he's lost. Mm. It's, I was just going to touch upon that, what you just said before, because we've got it over here in the UK with, with the Brexit and, and the kind of the, the, the sort of shift towards white wing, right wing politics, where do you think there is, a, what, there is a lack of compassion when it comes to people that move to other countries just on, in search for a better life or in some regards just for their survival and to... To, 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 to save, to, to help their families and to save their families. And just one, because you, you mentioned that, like, you know, and you, you sort of, uh, the characters in this, sort of everyone moving around and just, everyone's just searching for, for a better life, aren't they? And do, do you get surprised by the, the lack of compassion by, by people and by politicians? It's always been the case. You know, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's always been the case. If you people being, you know, being forced to leave, you know, cultures being forced to leave or for the promise of something better. Uh, you know, in the, in the 30s, you know, the turn of the century, uh, what, you know, in my case, Italians, they, they, they went to, they went to uh, uh, Brazil or they went to Canada or they went to the United States. Um, uh, you know, and then what it is, is it's the fear of the other. And the, the, the fear of they're going to take my job. And so when you get somebody uh, like Brexit, right? Uh, or, you know, it's kind of a cultural fascist thing that's being run by these wealthy 1% of the globe that are saying, don't look behind the curtain. You know, we're not the problem. It's, it's, it's the Arabs, it's the, it's the Muslims, it's, it's the Mexicans, it's the Italians. You know, look, look what happened during World War I. Uh, look what happened when, when the fascists came in with Mussolini. Uh, you know, this, this president that, that we have right now, Trump, reminds me very much of Mussolini. Uh, you know, pl play acting, a, a small person pretending to be this grandiose, if, if you look at, at footage of Trump going back 30 or 40 years, completely different person, you know, and, and, and the irresponsible nature of, a, of, of somebody that would say, don't worry about dying. 
you know, if you're poor, it's the least you can do for your country. Are you hoping for a, a different America in three weeks time? I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure that's possible. You know, I, I think, I think that the deck is stacked so, so hard that, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, this is not, this is like, it's not the right versus the left, it's right versus wrong or right versus might. And, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, you know I, I, this is, I'm afraid it, it may be the end of democracy of this democratic experiment. I think the experiment um, like, like AstraZeneca has, has to stop and, and pause until, until humanity puts down their smartphones and uh, it, it, it's very dystopian what we're going through. It's, it's very, I'm, I'm actually rereading Brave New World now. Um, uh, and what Huxley, it, it, it's, like, it's like a documentary of what's happening right now. If only he wrote it in the 30s. Um, I was just wanted to get onto something slightly lighter, just because obviously, as you can tell from the name of our website, hey, you guys, we're big fans of the Goonies. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to know uh, if, you know, how much of an affinity you have with, with that project. And obviously, you've had kids. Have you ever have you had the chance to sit down and, and share that movie with them and, and enjoy it in the same way we've always enjoyed it? Well, you know, talk about escapist movies, you know, the, compar the comparison and um, the uh, synergy that, that the Goonies has with From the Vine. From the Vine is kind of like Goonies for, you know, the, the 50 plus generation. Um, but working on the Goonies was the best experience I ever had. Uh, and, you know, the pirate ship on stage 16 at Warner Brothers in the Valley, my my then five year old son would come on weekends and we would go swimming in on the stage because the water was always eighty two degrees and you could go up uh, off the pirate ship and and jump off of the gangplank in the water and the water slides uh, slides that they built on it on other stages it 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 was just it was wonderful um you know my kids all love the goonies but but now I have grandkids and um we picked up my grandkids. I, I have four grandboys that live in Las Vegas, and uh, one's five, and the other seven. And back then, they're older now. Um, and uh, it came to my uh, attention that they'd never seen the Goonies, so you know I let their mom have it, and I told my daughter, "When we go home, boys, we're going to watch the Goonies." So we we rented it and we start watching it and they lost interest, you know, within the first 40 minutes of the movie and went off uh, a couple of days later, we were driving, my wife and I picked them up from school and we were driving back to the house and I said, hey boys, you know what? When we get home, we can watch the rest of the Goonies. And the older one said, no, thank you. <laughs> But I mean, you've had such a brilliant career. I, mean, I was looking over, I mean, it's hard to even know what to talk about in regards to looking back on some of your projects from The Sopranos to like The Matrix. But I did want to ask you how you felt about being killed off in Bad Boys. And it was, they gave you a good send off. But did you remember when you first got told that that character was going to be gone? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I said, well, you know, they, they, there's a death tax. I said, I want my, you know, if you're going to kill me, then I, I then you got to pay me more. If you don't kill me, I'll be cheaper. So, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, obviously then the, the, you got the, how do you feel about the matrix returning? You're looking forward to, to step, stepping back into that world from an audience point of view? Oh yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, so much has changed. Uh, um, it really, it, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, what she does with it because you know, when we made that movie, it was the beginning of CGI, you know, where they're really getting, starting to get good at it. And, and a lot of it, because uh, I was only involved in the first one, but a lot of it, 
it was like six months of training for the actors where they were learning the shots. You know, they were, they were, they were doing it. It was, there was no magic to it. There was no, you know, quick, fancy camera work. It was like single shots, like Gene Kelly or Fred Astaire doing, and Ginger Rogers doing complete sequence in a wide shot because they could, you know? Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely interested in seeing that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Joe. I could have spoken to you so much longer about politics, Goonies and everything, but unfortunately my time's up. But have a best of luck with the release of this movie. I thought it was really charming and I hope it does really well. Thank you very much and uh, good luck to you and I hope your hand feels better. Oh, cheers. I and hope you're not left-handed. <laughs> no, I'm right-handed, so I'm lucky. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!